Why, hello everyone. Once again, this is Filibuster Fox live streaming League of Legends every night at twitch.tv slash filibusterfox, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern Time. Join me for some League of Legends. That's right. We sit here and we watch games. We learn from them. I commentate them as best as I can, usually with a theme to the evening. Today's theme, map objectives. That's right, map objectives. Today we will be talking about blue buff, red buff, baron buff, dragon buff, towers, map control, that sort of thing. So we're going to wonder, hey, where the heck is the featured uh, games screen? Um, any, any featured games, League? No? You don't want me to spectate anything? So, here I am. I'm looking at the new uh, Who Will Rise. Season 3 is here. Yes, Season 3 has arrived today. There's a new league system. Let me just pull that up. I haven't actually finished my placement matches in Season 3 because I haven't been doing ranked at all since Season 2, with the exception of four games. Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, Diamond, and the Challenger tier. Challenger tier, of course, competing for the chance to go pro, which would be pretty fantastic, wouldn't it? And uh, once, basically, you advance through the tiers by maxing your position in your league with points and then doing a uh, best of three or a best of five to advance further. Match histories have been cleared as they've changed database things, so I have never actually played the game of League of Legends. So, moving on. You keep your stats, but it clears the match history. Let's see. They're in queue. Okay. Mind if I spec for stream? Stream. Yes, home. I will go ahead and ask permission before I do it anyways. <laughs> Not actually, but I'm going to... Uh... Excellent. So we will be once again... Uh, spectating Lover's X Requiem. Who will be doing his promotion match? Uh, which, which league are you in now? Are you in now? Question mark. Let's just find out if he is gold or what. Plat 2 at the moment. Alright. One more plat, I believe, and then he does the... Oh, uh, yes, plat 1, and once he maxes out in that, he can move up to diamond. Alright, so, uh, we're just waiting on him to actually find a match here. Maybe one of these days I will actually do my ranked games for a change. That would be a nice way to mix up what's going on. Looking at my uh, summoner icons here, the, the Christmas spirit kind of getting old. Uh, although I do love the Santa Baron Nasher there. I may move back to my Spectral Wraith or uh, perhaps my Bronze Cup from Season 1 or my Plat Cup from Season 2. Who knows? Oh, I did not mean to open that. So, uh, just waiting on this queue to actually turn into a game would be nice. Uh, yes. Uh, not sure. Waiting to hear back on my interview he'd, he'd asked in the league. This is irrelevant. Don't worry. I am just merely waiting on that queue to finish so we can see what they shall do. Go ahead and close that. Um, somewhat. It seemed rushed at the end. But yes, uh, we are just waiting on this to get going. While we wait, I shall play the Timo song. That's right. The Teemo song. The song that only those who play Teemo will... Where is... There it is. The Teemo song. The song every Teemo inspires whenever you play as him and troll around and win. Timo. 
Okay, that's enough of that. They have ratched into their game. We have a 1 minute 55 second timer remaining until we can spectate. On the blue team, we have Lovers X Requiem and LTG Frog as the bot lane with Caitlyn and Janna. Chinese Pope as the jungler and Nocturne. J Pope as the Kazix and Livingston the Jax. For the purple team, we have in the jungle, what a legend! There's Trundle trolling up uh, the jungle lanes. Lux and Ezreal, uh, sorry, Tarek and Ezreal as the bot lane. Lux in the mid and Shen up top. I believe we'll probably see Jack's top and Kazakh's mid, but that could actually go either way for the most part. Have a look at all of the champions available. The pool, yes. Uh, does it tell me who is banned? Not a really. No bans at all. There are no bans in this game, according to my spectate mode, which is a dirty lie. There are indeed bans to be had aplenty. That was not what I meant to hit there. Now, once again, hitting the buttons, I do not intend to. Let's just go ahead and wait for this match to begin. 40 seconds remain. Now, what we're going to try and look at in this match, of course... Oh, that new Annie flash. Or splash art. Look at that. Sorry, I got distracted very easily there. What we're going to be looking at in this match is map control, buffs, map objectives, everything like that. And we're going to see how these two teams approach these map objectives and comment on what might be done better and what we can learn from in this situation. 15 seconds remain before we head to the loading screens. I hope everyone is ready for some League of Legends. Those of you tuning in late, this is Filibuster Fox doing my nightly live stream, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern at Twitch TV slash Filibuster Fox. Here we go. Loading right in. First time I have seen the Season 3 patch. And we will discuss map control as Lovers X Requiem fights to get into the Plat 1 League. And here we are. Team comps already discussed. Perhaps two duo queues on either team with J Pope and Chinese Pope, very likely duo queuing, perhaps, or very coincidentally being in the same game. With Lovers X Requiem, LTG Frog being a known duo queue. That Lux skin I have not seen before. Either that's new with this patch and I didn't know about it and must immediately go buy it, or, uh,. It's just one. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's new with this patch. I do like that skin, and I'm going to buy it immediately after this game, unless I forget. Plenty of diamond players in here. Some gold and plat from season two. The diamond players mostly represented on the purple team. And the blue team being the up and comers advancing in the third season. Once Kazakh, Steric, and Trindle finish loading, we shall begin this match in the League of Legends. Very soon now, we shall begin as I wait patiently to discuss the map awareness and control of these two teams. Now, we've talked about map awareness quite a bit, good warding locations, and how you can pressure your lanes to keep that vision into their side of the map. I'm waiting to see what items people buy. Lover's X Requiem and Chinese Pope quite fast out of the blue base. Ezreal even faster out of the red. What shall we see here from the level 1 jungle fighting? Will there be an invade by either side, or will it merely be a defensive match to the farm? Jana warding bottomless tri bush as all of red team moves into the lane bush. Spotted by Jax. 
Jack's well aware of their presence there, taking a little bit of poke, but it's going to be irrelevant. There's plenty of time to heal up. Red team having to adjust their plans, drawing back towards their blue buff to start a regular jungle, having been spotted in their attempt to invade by a quite aware Livingston. Finn being in time to chase the minions after lane. All right, well, with the invade over, a very little bit of discuss about that. The attempt to control the opposing buffs as well as your own is the ultimate goal of any sort of level one jungle action. Both teams settling for controlling their own and not attempting to act on the other team. After Red had been spotted in their actions, Kha'Zix will be the mid player here. And with your related Pope fighting the blue buff. Caitlyn and Gianna slightly beating to lane their opponent, but for uh, no relevance. Both sides missing out on one farm. Now, this early game is going to be pretty much just farming up and getting ready while the junglers do their first clears. No actions happening here. Blue buff and red buff almost always go initially to your jungler, because they need that early XP in order to do anything early on. It is entirely feasible to give one of your buffs to one of the laning members that will put your jungler quite a bit behind. A red buff on an AD carry early game, though, can be a very powerful tool. Or on a top. Or a blue buff on a mid depending on what kind of team comp you have, and if your jungler is able to get away with it. In general, you will not see that happen. Unless, of course, you're stealing the other jungle, in which case you're more than happy to make happen. Eternal coming in top for Gank on Livingston, who is caught by the Shen Taunt and jumps right out of there to the Eternal, conveniently giving him an escape. Nocturne coming to counter gank the top lane, but he will walk right to a ward and be spotted. Turning around to head mid, a ping warning Lux of such activity. Nocturne may simply attempt to counter jungle here. Failing that, will come in behind Lux, who is pressuring the Kha'Zix. Nocturne doing very little to counter pressure. Down bottom, Caitlyn and Lux are very pushed up, and they have the River Ward, so they have the superior map control bottom at the moment. Pushing up without the River Ward is suicidal, but in this situation, they have better map vision and are locking Tarek and Ezreal to their tower. Still very little to discuss in the terms of map control in the early game. Nocturne getting into a bit of a fight with Trundle, but not to much up one as both junglers disengage from the other, not wanting to do a 2v2 fight in the top lane at this time. Bottom lane in pretty much in favor of the blue team at the moment. Frog and Lover's X working him very high. Khalif the Ezreal at half health. Tarek pretty much full. Kha'Zix having some trouble early on against this Lux mid, falling behind in farm and harass. A lot of potential to catch up later and just jump in and kill her. A noticeable lack of ability power damage on the blue team. Magic resist will not be a concern for the red team, and they can get away with building a little more armor despite armor pen. This is the AP Kha'Zix. Which case, I feel sorry for the blue team. Nocturne attempting to make something happen near mid. Trundle actually accomplishing something. First blood goes down to the red team on Caitlyn. Janna being chased out of lane. Nocturne close behind to try to help against Tarek. Ezreal and Shen both farming up in the bot. 
turn to Lux coming around to see if they can catch Gianna here. Will the snare hit? No, it will not. Very nice particle effects on that Lux skin. I like it. Shen with that level 6 gank in the bot lane, turning the tides there. Giving the advantage to the blue team. Feeling he can be aggressive upon Lux. The Nocturne coming to help to see if they can get a kill here to get them back into this game in a decent way. Lux 6, whereas Kha'Zix is not yet. Kha'Zix taking easy harass from Lux, ready to attack. Nocturne on the way, picking up to attack this Lux. Are we going to see this Lux manage to snare one of them and defend herself? Shield very well done, but the fear's gonna hit. Nice Shen ult to keep her alive. Lots of takings, and Kazix is caught by the Shen taunt, enabling a kill for mid. And more feed to the Shen, who is doing a very good job of putting that global presence into play. Jax trying to pressure the top tower while Shen is gone, but Shen will be back in plenty of time to stop him. Colonel about to give blue to Lux. Bot lane now a little happier now that the Shen ult is gone, unable to be ganked by that <laughs> once again. Is that a new effect there with the uh, flashy particles there? I believe it was. Eight minutes in, red team has a two kill and a 1.2k gold advantage lead. No tower kills as of yet on either side. Map control, not particularly strong objective-wise. Turn did just give blue buff to Lux wisely, giving her lots of harass. Blue buff now being taken down by the blue team as well. Turtle taking up his red buff for his future ganks. Nocturne sure to follow once he finishes being. No wards for either team anywhere. No map control at all. This is an example of a situation that's a little rough to be in early. A jungler could be very aggressive here due to the lack of vision. Conversely, a jungler could also not be very aggressive here due to the lack of vision, depending on how you look at it. The lack of knowledge of the enemy team's jungler makes ganking a dangerous thing. You gank into the face of the opposing jungler and they get the advantage. You've just fed three kills instead of two. Or something along those lines. Not always going to have everyone die. In fact, it's very unlikely that all three would die in that situation. All things considered, not a whole lot happening this other than some excellent Shen global presence. Dragon has been available for some time now, but not acted upon. Tarek finally placing a ward, and the top's getting wards as well. The blue ward's not terribly strategically placed. It can only cover the lane and the bush, completely helpless from the enemy try. And gives very short warning, even if they do come in the river. If he's pushed out to tower, he doesn't have enough time to get out of a dodge. Whereas the red ward, plenty of time. Nocturne ult down into the bot lane. Lover's Extra Cream almost going down to the enemy damage. Nocturne finishing up the kill on Tarek. Uh, on Ezreal. And Tarek about to go down as well. Lux had died at the same time. Turner looking like he's going to take down Caitlyn with the Shen ult to help him out there. Keeping him under tower with no problem. Nocturne up, up here. There he is. Too very low to come in and help. Trundle barely getting out with some health there. Kazakh's not far behind. Kazix may be able to push the situation here where he comes out after one of these two and tries to finish a kill. Kazix decides discretion of the better part of Valor. Shen in good condition to just sit and farm. So, uh, one kill lead for the red team now. That was a good fight for the most part for the blue team. Coming out ahead of it. 
500 gold disadvantage, nicely closing that gap. Shen teleporting up to the top lane, slightly less global presence as a result. His ult now the only means of teleporting to gank, with the exception, of course, of just walking there. No play at Dragon, yet. Jungler's farming up. Map control a little better now. Wards fairly common across the map. The majority of red team with plenty of wards down bot to blue team's zero wards down bot lane. Who are pushed up to the tower, not terribly worried about that, but the pink wards from the red team making it very difficult for them to actually put me out there. Snare and an old hit from Lux. Getting a quick two kills down in bot lane for the red team, right under the tower, no help at all. Died very, very quickly to that. The power of the pink wards keeping no vision there, leaving them vulnerable to the Lux just coming right in to do that. Fear not quite going off onto the Taric in range of tower. Stun keeping Nocturne back far enough to prevent it. Blue team pinging up Dragon like they wish to contest it. Trundle stealing some rays like a troll. Bit of a fight top. Jax against Shen. Jax getting the upper hand here. Filibuster Fox in need of some coffee. In an early day. Still, not a whole lot of excitement in this match as we mostly wait on things to unfold into the mid-game to really take advantage of that sort of map control. The team finally warding up their tri-bush along with Red who no longer has a pink ward there, at the very least in favor of blue team. Getting a regular ward there helps out quite a bit against ganks. Since they are pushed up to the tower for the most part, that and the lane are the most likely places for their opponent to come from. <laughs> 1.3k gold advantage for the red team with a 3 kill lead and looking pretty good for them early on. Trundle all up in Kingston's business. Shen missing the taunt actually, but Lux hitting the ult to finish him under their tower. Lead extending for the red team. Kazix having finished his own blue. Nocturne goes right in on Ezreal. The fear does not proc. Carrot Spending as much as he can to protect Ezreal against that three-man gank in the bot lane. Not able to pick up any kills for Blue in that situation. The pink Ward runs out just in time for Frog to place a new one. And now the advantage map control goes to the Blue team at the bot lane. Of course, top is in great favor for the red team. That uh, Jax having been killed, leaving Shen to just farm behind the tower. Wait for the next minion wave to arrive to get some free tower damage before the next minions can get there. We're gonna bring that tower down to about half health to match up his opponents. Other towers basically in identical situations. Very even in the map control for towers, which is a good sign for the blue team because they're falling behind in most other aspects. A late cleanse by Lover's X Requiem as they saw Trundle coming in, blowing it to make sure they got out before the troll could stop them. Nocturne counter ganking in the bot lane, all of the red team very low on mana. Unable to really fight this without the mana. No connection quite on that tornado as Kazix moves to cut Lux off from being able to come bot. Jackson Shen dealing around mid. Shen entirely possible that uh, his ult is off cool or er, down and teleport just now coming off cooldown. So if he gets aggressive and pushes up the lane, he has the potential to teleport bot to a ward or a minion and do some ganking. Not turn out out of the picture with the blue team at a disadvantage should he choose to do so. He's now nicely pushed up. 
A good ward placement from the bot lane will give Shen an opportunity to teleport down with little awareness on the part of blue team. And Jack's getting bullied right down under his tower. Red picking up this bot lane, looking like Shen really wants to come down for a kill, but there is no opportunity. In order to teleport to, and blue team is very low, or very near their tower, rather not low at all. Both of red team being out of the lane and just in time for Jenna to not stop them. 2,000 gold advantage for the red team with a 4 kill lead. Blue has an opportunity here to do some tower damage. Ezreal's going to ult to try and slow them down, but it's not really going to help much. Tower being quickly taken down. Nocturne ganking mid with Hazix. Not doing enough as the Shadow comes in to save Lux from most of the damage. A blue team forced to escape from that situation. Trundle working his way around down to the bot lane to keep them pinned away from that tower. Nocturne. Looking like Trundle wants to kill him. Trundle sneaking around. Be very, very careful. Dragon's still not taken by other team. Neither team getting a strong enough advantage at any point to take the dragon. Trundle coming around behind the bottom lane. Pinging like he wants to gank, but Nocturne is there. Could turn against either team very quickly here. Tarek just tanking the tower. Trundle stopping Caitlyn for the most part with the slow. Nice trap placement preventing him from coming in. Nocturne just going into his death in the middle of the three of them, eating all of their burst. Now Lux here to help. With no chance for the blue team to turn this around. Now, Red has the chance to take Dragon. This is the opportunity they are waiting for. Is bot blue tower going down? The bottom lane forced to go away. No contention at this Dragon. And Jax kills the uh, Shen top under tower, finishing him off very nicely there. Kha'Zix attempting to steal with not quite enough damage to pull it off. But a valiant attempt. Blue team finally losing their bot turret. The dragon and her gold combining together for a 3k gold lead for the red team along with their four kills. 20 minute mark. That's starting to become a bit of an advantage here. The 3k gold has to be shored up fairly quickly. Ezreal is ready to go in for the gank. Ready to arcane shift over that wall. But a tower goes down for the blue team closing up that money gap to 2.2k. Blue team able if they push out the bot lane to quickly take down that tower. It is very low. Especially if Ezreal finishes being. They remain careful in farming, which is the safer option due to their lack of vision. They won't be able to take this tower with Ezreal gone. Turk with nice ward placement for vision. The bottom half of the map completely safe unless they walk through the lane. Jax now level above Shen from Shen's roaming, able to jump right in and do a lot of damage. Getting taunted back a little there, but he's just going to keep chasing. There's no one on the red team to help Shen here. Shen going to lose half of his health before escaping. Switching to farm up some uh, minions for health. Aggressively pushing down this bottom tower. Eternal and Shen both top unable to help there, and down it goes. Equalizing gold to 1,000 advantage for the red team. Taking away everything but their 4 kill lead. Now, our tower kills are not showing up right now. I have to see if this is a new Season 3 patch bug, in which case I will need to report it. Just go ahead and uh, print screen that. Shen almost to die to Jax, but Trindle doing enough damage to save him. Nocturne going right in on Lux with everything he has. Trundle is there to help Lux. Nocturne's gonna have to get out of there, or Kha'Zix may go in anyways. 
stealthing right in. They don't see him. Well, they do see him coming now. That stealth was nearly long enough. Jumping right over to the tunnel. This could be a lot of trouble for him because Lux is just there doing DPS. And down goes Kazix. Focusing the wrong target in that fight, going in on a nice full health trundle. Lux just sitting back and ulting because she's Lux and had the opportunity. This gold lead extending once again in favor of the red team to 2k gold. And not zero towers to zero towers, it is indeed one to two favoring blue. Don't you have the flu. Rhyme is not my best thing. But hey. I just don't sing. I don't know. Here we go. Terrick coming in for the gank in the mid lane. Frog and Requiem holding them off very nicely. A lot of damage put onto Ezreal and Lux. They're doing a very fantastic job of just sitting here and farm and getting some nice poke in on the opposing champions. Jax and Shen are ready for another fight top. Shen getting some initial damage down and then more being dealt by Jax. The Nocturne ult scaring Shen a little there, but she's really in the mid along with Kha'Zix and the other two blue champions. Shen ulting down to help. Kha'Zix getting away with barely any hit points after the Lux ult. Shen Su very, very tanky. Shocking build of a Warmogs and a Sunfire Cape. Who would expect Shen to build that? Jax coming in from behind or not realizing, hey, my tower is dead and my team is scared and low health. The killing spree in favor of red team there. Getting Kazix and, uh, yeah, just Kazix. Ezreal dying to Caitlyn and Jax. Once again, a bit of a flip fight here. Jax and Kazix dead. Only Ezreo killed on the red team. The Lux ult um, combined with the tunnel almost devastating. There's X Rekko in barely getting out of range, but is getting dived very hard here. We may see Nocturne die or one of the other two if either of them gets CC'd. But no. They do not do not succumb to CC. The red team is simply going to take another tower here, extending their gold advantage even more significantly. It's starting to look a lot more difficult for the blue team to come back from. Jax finally respawning, but the tower is already dead. Red team moving to secure both the blue and the red buff. Unfortunately, not actually there for them to take. Baron buff warded by the red team, but no other. Dragon already down, so not available to be taken on the advantage of that. Their own red and blue buffs not available as of yet. So they can go back to farming. Blue team is going to counter push this mid lane to try to equalize the damage that was just done to them. Shen up top out of this fight for now. His ult on cooldown, but teleport not. Three coming to stop the mid push. Ezreal coming up from behind with the ult, but it's not going to be enough to do any damage to really scare them. But it will delay them enough from the Taric and Trundle and Lux poke to get them off of that tower before Ezreal comes up behind them. 3,000 gold advantage for the red team with the 7 kill lead. Three towers taken by the blue team. Three towers taken by the red team. And a dragon once again going to the red team as they quickly take this down before blue can react. No more ward at Baron buff. Either team could take advantage of this should they know of it. Red team has slain the dragon. The dragon extending red's gold lead, a nice comfortable 3.6. Caitlyn caught by the stun and the taunt, but not enough damage to follow up on it. Are they going to be able to slow her down enough to kill her before she can escape? Shen going right into the taunt, exhausted under the tower, but getting out with no problems at all. Caitlyn very low, going back to heal up. Red going to try to take advantage of Caitlyn retreating to kill this tower. The Gianna shield not being nearly enough to save them, but from what? For one attack from the red team. The tower goes down finally. Nothing to defend the blue team against the engage here, but Jax goes right in on Ezreal. The snipe hitting Tarek in the back instead of the intended target of Ezreal. 
Nocturne going right in to finish off Ezreal quickly, but Kha'Zix is going to follow very shortly, and Caitlyn is probably going to get caught by the pillar here, and saunted by the Shen and die very quickly. This is going to give the opportunity for the inhibitor to be taken by the red team, with no contestion by the blue. We may either see them attempt to push up and take a Nexus Tower here, or get out of dodge, or try and kill a Nocturne who got a little too aggressive there, but in comes Frog, the Janna, not quite able to do any damage because she's support, but slowing Trundle enough to do a lot of damage on him. Tons of damage going to Shen as he's getting kited as he's trying to retreat. Everything the red team can do to try and slow down the blue pursuit going down, but Shen's still stuck here. So much slow by Janna. The dash by Shen may have been enough for him to escape this counterattack. The inhibitor lost by the blue team, putting them behind by a distinct disadvantage here. Nocturne going right in on three of the red team. He's gonna die there, but Jax is gonna follow up, keep them in the fight. John is gonna try to hold them in position, but there's simply not enough for the blue team there. Tarek's gonna go down, but so is Jax. Lux, uh, Janna, and Kazix having to withdraw from this situation before things go from bad to worse. With a 9 kill lead for the red team, a 3.2k gold advantage, I'm sorry, a 4.2k gold advantage for the red team. Uh, they've taken down 3 towers mid, 1 tower bot against 1 tower in each lane for the blue team. That inhibitor mid though, a big risk. Blue attempting to take this Baron perhaps here. No, they were just checking it to make sure red wasn't taking it. Their attempts to take Baron would have impressed me if they were able to manage it, but that is a huge risk and they needed to defend the base. Nocturne coming in to steal the farm from Caitlyn. Ezreal stealing the farm from Blue Team. No raves for them at all. Red buff is available. Ezreal may attempt to take this here. He did poke and realize that it is there. He may just be denying this. He does have his own red buff. It is barely a quarter of the way through. But may as well have a refresh and a denial for the red team. For the blue team. Or rather. 28 minutes in. We're seeing a, an advantage in favor of the red team here. An inhibitor is going to be very powerful as they begin to roam around and try to pressure this outer top tower. Very vulnerable. Jax is not going to be able to save it here. Trundle's pillar slowing him down enough and chasing him off but not quite enough for the team to catch up. Top tower going down very quickly. Red team able to stay together and push lanes because mid will push itself. Who either has to devote someone to it or force a fight quickly. Because the longer they spend dancing around top with the red team, the more those minions will push in and the less chance they'll have to come back. They engage under the tower. A lot of damage going down onto the blue team. Barely any hurt to this tanky tanky red team. Jack's killed by the luck there. Frog barely getting out of there as Janna with health. The pillar slowing Caitlyn, but it's not going to be enough to catch Caitlyn. The flash getting Caitlyn nice and safe away. Another tower in favor of the red team. 10 kill advantage and the 6k gold lead. It's going to be very difficult for them to do anything. The cleanse going down to clear the Tarek stun, but Caitlyn still just barely getting away from the situation here. Blue is going to lose another inhibitor tower, another inhibitor here, as Frog is caught and goes down to the Lux ult. Ezreal die or Ezreal kills the tower. I'm sorry, I keep thinking that's a, an execution or something, but it's actually a tower kill. Inhibitor dies to Lux, and Kazix is going right in trying to finish off this Ezreal. He gets the Ezreal, and therefore the red buff. Jax goes in on Tarek, but Shen ult saving him very nicely. They're strolling Jax long enough for Jax to die here. Only Caitlyn and Kha'Zix remain. They're cut off from their healing. Blue team is going to lose at least one Nexus Tower here. The second will soon follow. Kha'Zix is not going to be able to do enough damage to get them off of this. Neither will Caitlyn. And this is going to be the end for the blue team. 32 seconds before Jax is up. John is here now. They may be able to kill at least one of the red team, but they're not going to be able to save this if red keeps a concentrated attack on the Nexus. Here we go. The Nexus is going to go down very quickly. Not enough damage from the blue team available. Down it goes. Match goes to the red team or the purple team.
with a very dominant showing from that Shen and the Trundle doing a very, very good job taking advantage of Jax's disadvantage early and that mobility that Shen offers across the whole map. All right, everyone, this is going to be a short one today. I'm going to go ahead and call it after this one match. We did a brief discussion about... Uh, map control but really it wasn't terribly focused on that map because that match did not show a lot of good examples of taking advantage of the map control and objectives baron never actually taken in that match dragon only taken twice the uh, towers obvious objectives that we did cover at least well let's go have a look at the skins what's new what's on sale skins anything on sale that i don't have Little Knight of Mumu and Exile Morgana. Let's grab those. So buy everything that's on sale now. Steel Leech and Garen Lux. Gotta get the Lux. Uh, and the Garen may as well match. Because why not? It's there. Okay, there we go. Got that one that I was looking at. Don't want Mash Shaco yet. Let's just back out here and have a look at the skins once again. There we go. Cutting down the skins I need to get to a metric shit ton. And much lower than it was previously of two metric shit tons. But at least I'm a little closer to finishing my collection. Let's see, uh, champions. Let's see, Annie, Prom Queen Annie. May as well unlock that because, hey, Annie changes. All right, there we go. I have all the Annie skins I can possibly have. Let's have a look. Am I missing any? Annie. Owned. 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 Owned, owned, and Panda Annie not available. Oh, no, why don't I have Panda Annie? No, I must have Panda Annie. Where is Panda Annie? I'll get that as soon as it is available. Then I shall have all the Annie skins once again. But for now, I am only missing Panda Annie. This has been Filibuster Fox. Of <laughs> craves his ass there. Uh, this has been Filibuster Fox streaming League of Legends. You can join me every day at... Twitch.tv slash filibusterfox at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. Also, you can watch any of the recorded episodes that I have done in the past at either my YouTube channel. There's a playlist there just for the League of Legends live streams that you can look at. Or at my Twitch.tv slash filibusterfox channel, which uh, wouldn't have any audio syncs. If you run into an audio sync issue on the YouTube video, just watch the Twitch TV equivalent because that's an error with the processing that sometimes happens when it's transferred over. Thank you everyone for watching, and I will see you next time.